Hi there, this is Thomas, your speed reading coach. Today, I'd like to share a little bit about mind mapping, and I call it here a revolutionary approach to creating notes, which really is one of the greatest revolutions in the information age. So, thanks Tony Buzan for creating mind mapping. Today, we're going to explore that. And since I was really asked quite a bit to, to explain mind mapping, because I do recommend to use it whenever reading books, uh, today we're going to look into several things. What is mind mapping? When shouldn't we use mind mapping? When we should and how to do it. So firstly, um, it's not always that we want to be mind mapping. Some books are fine to just read without mind mapping. In fact, it's even much more efficient to do so. But most of the books we read, especially if it's nonfiction, self-development, and business books, mind mapping them can have an amazing benefit on your memory, remembering them seeing them in a much more um, clear format for application and for just remembering it. And you will see that you remember it several times better. The results I've gotten from my clients and uh, they really fall in love with it. So a lot of people really just fall in love with mind mapping uh, a lot. So to begin with, when you see this plane, what will come to your mind can be several things. What kind of plane is it? Why is Thomas showing me this plane? Um, should I look at the sky or the plane? You know, different kind of things pop up just by seeing this image. Um, so that's because our mind isn't linear, but it's radiant. We don't tend to think linearly, we tend to think radiantly. And Tony Buzan, by learning about mind mapping, that's what he discovered. He discovered that we don't think step by step, but as soon as we see something, multiple ideas can occur. And if you look at the diaries of the geniuses, like Einstein, Da Vinci, they would all do, they would all make diaries. And surprisingly, or not necessarily surprisingly, um, they would look like mind maps. So that's what Tony Buzan found and decided to coin this term and make it into a pretty big and amazing thing. So this is how a mind map can look. It doesn't have to be this colorful, this, um, it doesn't have to be this beautiful necessarily, unless you're into drawing. Uh, but it's it's a good idea to put some pictures in it. So the more colors, the more pictures, the more your right brain is working, the more it's you're also fully engaged in it, in creating, and the better you will remember. So it's not necessary to make it super colorful, but we're going to look into how colorful to make it. So some benefits of mind mapping. Firstly, we learn how to remember and apply the information much, much better. If you mind map it, it's quite simple to remember it. You're going to increase your retention of the material several times, especially because you also uh, make it in your own way, in your own unique way. You apply it um, and put it down, jot it down in a way that really resonates with you. So it's not only a mere bunch of words that you have read, but now it has a certain structure. You're going to look into that. And then to remember, it's much easier to apply. It's also much easier because now you can just look at it. It's all on one piece of paper. If you're into self-development, you may know Tony Robbins. So whenever he was doing the courses, it, one of his mentors told him, look, let's put all of this huge course that we have here into one big mind map. So this tree-like structure, this mind map, gives us a holistic view of something. And then we can have a much more greater much greater understanding of it, uh, when we want to remember it or when we want to use it or learn from it, add something, take something away. Also, it can be a beautiful tool for brainstorming ideas. So instead of writing it down linearly, where then you have to insert things and make it all messy, now you can just make a mind map and continue to expand it for however long you want. You can have a, a huge piece of paper, a three piece of paper is usually what I recommend, and uh, just work on that. If you want to make it even more big, you can have a two, a one piece of paper and just expand, expand on it. Now, something that we, before we even go any further a lot of the time people ask me should I use mind mapping software or should I uh, simply draw it with my hands well if you do like the softwares you can try them out there's plenty of them plenty of free ones just google them but I do recommend at least for a while to try and do it with your hands just because writing is a neuromotorical activity which just simply means that you remember better what you write so if you don't write something down, um, 
or if you don't write it down with your hand, you're not gonna remember it as well. Also, it just engages your right brain so much more to draw it with your own hand and use different colors. It's just much more enticing, and you, you tend to remember better than if you use it on your computer. Now, if you hate drawing, wonderful, even better, something new to uh, learn. It's not really drawing here; it's more like a sketch that we're making, or more of a structured um, way of putting the material down. But also, once again, to go back to it, uh, we can brainstorm ideas in a much more fluent way. We can solve problems easier, same with brainstorming, and simply learn to think and create more efficiently. It's a beautiful, beautiful tool. It can be used in many aspects of life. So hopefully you're motivated now, and um, our brains process and recall information dynamically and visually. That's basically what I shared with you, that uh, we don't think linearly, but more dynamically, and uh, we tend to visually process and recall it. So that's why mind mapping is so brilliant. And some most common mistakes before we get into the whys, or before we get into the hows, really. Some of the mistakes that people do are cramming the mind map, just leaving no space at all, just making it very tight, which is just annoying to, to look at it later. And um, it's not clear, a lot, clear, clear at all if you have fun too many words, too little images, so a lot of the time you just write down a huge sentence or just uh, basically if it's more than one to two words, well maximum three, but one to two words uh, is really enough. If you have a sentence you want to jot down, you can just write it down at the corner of the mind map, but don't cloud the mind map with it too much. And make small images, use symbols, etc. It's better than using too many words. And the, uh, the next one is getting stuck in one area for too long, which is really a big one. I get this a lot with people that I work with. And they say, so, you said I can read this book in one and a half hours, but I spent one hour just going through this one chapter out of the 20 chapters in the book and mind mapping that. Then I say, okay, if you have one and a half hours to read the book, and there's, say, 10 chapters, okay? So there's 10 chapters, one and a half hours. That will be nine minutes per chapter. So we have, on average, nine minutes to mind map the chapter. Now, some chapters you will invest more in. Some chapters you will invest, uh, invest less, less time, less. You will really care about them less. And uh, how it will, how the mind map will end up looking is that there's the core idea, maybe the name of the book in the middle. Then there are some uh, aspects that are more important to you that are more developed so there's a, more branches on it which we're going to get to in a sec and then there are some that are less developed which don't aren't really so important to you which aren't so uh, relevant basically so don't get stuck in one area for too long but know what is it that's the most important for me take it and move on now how to mind map so the key essentials are writing, so write one to two words on the branches, and we're going to get to mind map to kind of see an example in a sec, but write one to two words on a branch, use as many images as you can, so draw images if you can instead of words, and use different colors, so it's a good idea to use, for instance, five colors at least, if you can use ten, that's brilliant, don't use uh, pencils, use pens, especially gelling pens, are really great for mind mapping. So use different colored pens, and um, it's much easier to distinguish them, the different parts of the mind map, to kind of see which one, um, yeah, basically tell them apart. And it looks just much, that much more, uh, that much better, and it's much easier to go through it, and you want to go through it much more when it has a certain look. Also, it activates your right brain much more. So you're much more creative, you're much more focused on it. It's much more uh, useful. And use A3 paper. Um, so brainstorm the topic, only then read and mind map. So firstly, that's something you can do whenever you're venturing into a new topic, learning something about a new topic, or relatively new topic, say. A topic you haven't read 
about a lot previously. What you can do is you can make a mind map out of it even before you read the book. And only then read the book and mind map it, uh, make a second mind map. So the first mind map will basically be you mind mapping what you currently know about the topic. And then the second mind map will be you mind mapping the book. And then if you like, you can merge them even together and have one big mind map. So it's a good idea to brainstorm the topic even before we mind map the book. Mind map what's inside your mind about this topic. And this is more or less how a mind map will look. So let's go through it real quick. Start at a blank piece of paper. It's landscape. Start in the middle. It's at the center, and then continue expanding further and further. The lines are some of them are thicker. You can see these ones around here are thicker, and these ones are thinner. It's going very organic, naturally radiating. Um, many different images. Not too many words uh, connected. So one word, uh, two words, and one branch. keywords really put on emphasis on the words that are the most important you can make them bigger it's, it's these keywords around the branches uh, images With images you want to really enrich the mind map and especially it's a good idea to use different codes and symbols now why, why is that such a good idea codes and symbols shorten how much time you will have to spend with a mind map. So instead of in the past where you would have to write a huge uh, paragraph or long sentences in order to jot the book down, to jot the key parts of the book, what you can do now is you can simply uh, expand on um, the branches one at a time and you can shorten not only into several words or a word or two words in one branch which you can even do is you can add pictures, which can be really fast when you get it. Add symbols, which also can clarify to you, say, a star means a favorite part of yours. Say, um, exclamation mark means important. Say, uh, let's just say you, you're learning about something where there's word human a lot. Uh, what you would do is you can, for example, write hu dot, and you will understand that by this you mean human, so you won't have to waste time. Uh, doing this for a while. So what you're doing here is making sure that you really remember it. Now as for different colors, um, once again just several co colors are enough. Structure is basically it's, it's pretty clear I think. There's nothing else you really need to know about mind map to start doing it, to start applying this for books. If you want to read up something on it, there's a great book by Tony Buzan called The Mind Mapping Book, uh, which is from the founder but this is perfectly enough. And then whenever you read the book, say there's six parts of it, six um, chapters in the book, you would approach them like this. So you can see some of them here are a little less developed, some of them are more developed. And that's the same that you do with the book. Even though uh, with the in, in the book, there can be all the ten chapters, say, can be developed uh, in the same fashion or there's enough information in them. There will only be uh, some of them that you will resonate with the most. There will only be some of them that will be the most new to you. If you don't really resonate, if it's not so new to you, just feel free to skip or skim and move on. Now, to mind map or not to mind map? That's the question. I was just trying to be funny here, but it's my Eastern European sense of humor. Anyways, so it's not necessary to mind map all of the books. Shouldn't mind map it if there's too useful information. So if you have the book and it doesn't seem like there's a lot in it, you can just go through it, and it's not necessary to mind map. Now, if we don't mind map, how do we still make sure we remember it? How do we still make sure we get the most out of it? Well, instead of mind mapping, you can do a couple of things. You can underline. Maybe I mean, <laughs> that's pretty obvious. So I thought I'd mention it here. You can underline if it's your book. You can use a pen or a pencil. It's not if you just take the book from the library, you can still just use a pencil. Underline the core things in it. You can also use markers. So you can use one marker and can say, okay, checkpoint, it's important. Or to go back to do. 
you can use an exclamation uh, point, which can mean important. You can use two, which will mean very important. You can use three, which will mean very effing important. Like, okay, this is super key. Whatever. So you can come up with your own markers. You can come up with the ones you resonate with. These are just examples. But you can simply use these ones when you don't even want to mind map the book. But maybe there are certain parts of it that are important. And what you will find is that the more you read, the more self-love and books especially, the more um, business books you read, the less you will want to explore all of the book. And the more you will only go for certain parts of the book. So this can be useful if you're already quite knowledgeable about a topic. Just get a couple things out of it because the mind map will probably be very empty if you already know quite a bit about the topic, if there isn't that much relevant information in the book. So use markers. And, uh, make the book your own. Instead of just leaving the book as it is, basically work with it, play with it, until it becomes um, embodied in a shape that feels genuine to you. And until you make it. Uh, a certain way that resonates with you, that shows what's most important, so that you can always go back to it, go through it, and you're good. You're clear. You don't need to reread it once again, necessarily, unless you want to. Now, the challenge from this for you, my friend, is to mind map 30 books, and it takes about 30 books to mind map them, to speed read about 30 books to really get uh, make a habit out of it, to make this uh, sort of feel like natural to have this in a in an unconscious competence to really get it down quote unquote so instead of um, instead of having it feel like an effort which it may feel for the first couple of times I know I would really hate reading and uh, I would also hate uh, drawing so whenever I got into speed reading and they told me okay now mind map and at the same point as you're mind mapping you have to read very fast I'm like this is just too much, this is too crazy, but you just do it for a couple of times in a relaxed way, just, it's not rushed reading, it's speed reading, so just go slow, um, or read fast, but don't rush, basically. so mind map 30 books, and also, uh, whenever the book doesn't have a lot of structure or useful information, simply make notes in the book without mind mapping it, so you have the freedom to do both, for now, feel free to explore by reading 30 books. Uh, thanks for tuning in today. I'll see you in the other videos. And if you'd like to learn more, uh, simply check out my course that I created. There are many classes sim similar like this where we get more in depth with speed reading, where we go into how to read um, fiction books, nonfiction books, technical material, etc. So if you'd like, I made the first part of the course for free. So thanks.